Here we go. Welcome to Baptist Medical News Network. I'm Rhonda McRae. Thank you so much for joining us today for our special webcast. We're talking today about swine flu and seasonal flu. And here to help us today is Dr. Keith Harris. Dr. Harris, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Dr. Harris is with the Baptist Medical Clinic Family Practice in Byram. So we're looking forward a lot to hearing what you've got to say about this issue. But before you started, just three quick housekeeping issues. First of all, if you want to ask a question to Dr. Harris, you can post a question right on the website where you're um, watching this right now. Go ahead and post your question now. We're going to talk first and then we'll come back and get to the questions later uh, in this webcast. But you can go ahead and post your questions right now. Secondly, as you watch this webcast, you may see some advertising that scrolls across the bottom of the webcast. And I just want to point out that's not paid to Baptist. That is Ustream advertising uh, that makes this live streaming possible. So know that about the advertising. And then lastly, we are recording this. So at the end of the webcast, we will put this on our website. So if you think someone could benefit from seeing this webcast that maybe couldn't watch it live, you can direct them to our website and it'll be available um, either later today or, or possibly Monday. Our, and the uh, web address to go to look at the recorded version is www.mbhs.org slash mednewslive and there'll be a link right there. So with all that, we're going to just jump right in, Dr. Harris. So first of all, um, let's just talk and, and, you know, let's lay the foundation. What is flu? Flu is um, a, usually a seasonal respiratory virus that is transmitted from person to person. It causes certain constellation of symptoms, um, high fevers, cough, sore throat. Some people um, are more susceptible to the flu or, or complications of the flu, such as pneumonia. Um, um, these people usually have underlying health conditions, mm -hmm. such as emphysema or asthma or heart disease. Okay. Um, there are many different types of, of flu, and in uh, a type A flu, uh, a type B flu. There's even a type C flu. Mm -hmm. um, flu C usually doesn't cause severe illness, and people may be a little runny nose or cold, so we don't. You don't hear people talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, most flu in any given year is caused by type A flu. And within type A flu, there are several different subtypes. One of those subtypes would be the new flu, uh, swine flu. Okay. Um, but seasonal flu um, is also a flu A. Um, so what we commonly think of as seasonal flu is, some, is known as, as flu A. And swine flu, which is another thing we're talking about today, is, is a kind of flu A. Correct. Okay. Swine flu is a flu A. Okay. Um, flu, um, flu viruses are tight. You could think of it as colors. Um, flu A would be blue. Um, swine flu would be a shade of blue okay. that's different from seasonal flu. But it's in the same but it's color still, plan. <laughs> it's still flu A. Okay. It's different. Okay. All right. Well, um, so maybe let's talk about that. Maybe that's the first thing we've kind of talked about flu. It's the respiratory infection that we already know. But what it, what is the difference between seasonal flu and swine flu? They, they both have similar symptoms. Um, the, the new thing about swine flu, or the bad thing about swine flu is it's new and, and nobody in the population really has any immunity. Okay. Um, so we expect a much worse flu season this year. Um, since nobody has any immunity, we expect it to run rampant through schools, um, offices, homes even. Um, okay. So many, many more people are expected to get the swine flu or the flu this year. Is, uh, would you, I'm sorry, go ahead. All the while, while the swine flu is going to be circulating, seasonal flu will also be circulating. Okay, is, um, would you say that swine flu is more dangerous than seasonal flu? Um, both types of flu can cause serious illness in people and there's really no way to predict how sick someone is, is going to get. Now normally healthy individuals, they'll usually overcome the swine flu reasonably easily. They'll be sick, mm -hmm. um, but they'll usually overcome it pretty easily. Same thing for the swine flu. Um, again, the problem with the swine flu is nobody has any immunity to it, so many, many, many more people are going to get sick. Okay, so in the general population, more people tend to have some immunity to seasonal flu than swine flu. Nobody has the immunity to swine flu. Exactly. Okay, but 
in terms of the um, danger, they're similar. Similar. Similar in terms of how a, a healthy person would respond to it. Correct. Okay. Well, that that maybe is is the uh, next question. Or let's talk about symptoms. Flu. Are they similar for swine flu and seasonal flu? Yes. Okay. Um, you can, with with swine flu or seasonal flu, most people can expect a, a high fever, usually in the order of 102 to 103 degrees. Um, you would expect a runny nose. Some people will have congestion in their nose. Most people will have a sore throat, and most people will have a non-productive or a dry cough. Okay. Um, there are a handful of people that will also develop uh, some nausea and some vomiting. Some people will even develop diarrhea. It does seem that swine flu does tend to cause more nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. This is usually in smaller children, though. Okay, so that's one something that one difference that you're seeing in smaller children. It tends to have more of the GI Correct. effect. Correct. Okay. Okay. And I can't quote percentages, but oh yeah, but but in general, that's mm -hmm. a difference we've seen. All right, so let's talk about um, treatment. What is the treatment for for flu? Is is it different for swine flu for seasonal flu? Uh, it, for a normal healthy individual um, who has no who is not in a high risk group, no, the treatment is is bed rest, um, analgesics to control your fever rest and plenty of fluids mm -hmm. um, and most most people with healthy immune systems can overcome the flu with just supportive care both flus both flus okay now right. with uh, high risk individuals um, or or the cdc publishes guidelines on who to treat and how to treat them mm -hmm. um, on those people that are treated there are various options um, either inhaled medications or oral medications mm -hmm. all right so you were talking about high risk who are who who is most at risk for flu and is it different for seasonal flu versus swine flu who is most at risk persons anyone's at risk for the flu everyone is at high risk for the swine flu again because no one has any natural immunity um, people who are at high risk for complications, complications from the flu okay. would be those that have underlying respiratory conditions these would be things like uh, emphysema mm -hmm. or uh, asthma, mm -hmm. um, whether it be uh, an older person with emphysema or a young child with asthma. Uh, persons with heart disease are at high risk for complications from the flu. Now, heart disease does not, this does not include people with just garden variety hypertension. Okay. Um, this would be people who have uh, coronary artery disease or, okay. or they've had a history of heart failure. Okay. Those are people that are at high risk for the flu for flu complications. complications. Um, diabetics tend to be at higher risk for complications for the flu, mainly because their immune systems are compromised from their diabetes. Of course, anyone that has um, any kind of immunosuppressive disease, HIV patients, or anyone who's taken uh, transplant medications would be at high risk for complications, complications from the flu. And when complications occur, what generally are those? One of the one of the most common, most serious complication would be uh, pneumonia. Okay. Since flu is a respiratory virus and it's going to attack your sinuses, your throat, and your lungs, mm -hmm. uh, pneumonia is very common. Um, and is, you know, if you if you already have emphysema and you develop pneumonia on top of it, you're going to be a pretty sick cookie. Okay. Well, suppose a person, um, unfortunately, has a high, you know, they're in one of those groups that has the high risk for complications. In, in flu and they get a flu, seasonal flu or swine flu, how, what are the symptoms of the condition worsening so that they need to take action? How, how, yeah, how do you know if things are, are you developing a complication? Right. Um, flu will run a natural course. You'll, people will run um, frequent high spiking fevers, they'll feel really bad, they'll be achy, they'll be sick. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, a day or two later, things will start getting better. Mm -hmm. um, if you suddenly relapse and you start having high fevers again, or your cough worsens, mm -hmm. or um, you become ashen, or you're so sick that you, you can't hold down fluids and you become dehydrated, these are all warning signs that you're developing a complication of fluid. Okay. Um, so if you're getting better and then you suddenly worsen, um, you should seek medical care. Okay, all right. And if, even if you, don't, uh, if you don't get better and relapse, if you're, if you're so ill with the flu, especially in young children, if, if a child is not keeping up with their fluid intake, or they're, they're having trouble breathing, or their, their lips are blue, or they're ashen, um, these are all reasons to seek medical care. All right, so if a child has 
blue lips? Is that make an appointment or is that go that's to the emergency room? Blue lips, um, uh, rapid breathing, um, that's emergency. Okay, all right. Hopefully. A, an inconsolable child, a child that does not want to be held, an adult that um, is acting delirious or, or confused, um, or if you have an adult that uh, suddenly starts having unexplained chest pain or unexplained abdominal pain, mm -hmm. um, those are all reasons to seek emergency treatment. Okay, all right. Well, with all that, um, I think maybe we, it's time to talk about prevention. Sure. <laughs> what should a person do to protect himself or herself from from the flu and is it different for what we know is seasonal flu and swine flu? It is different. It is different, um, okay. Get a flu shot. Um, seasonal flu vaccines are, are already available um, and in wide supply. We're already giving them out in our clinic. Okay. Um, it's not too early to get a flu shot. Uh, most flu shots start towards the end of September. Certainly by early October you should get your vaccine. There is a swine flu vaccine that is currently under development um, and we should start seeing a supply of that in mid-October. Um, right now you can get the seasonal flu vaccine at most medical clinics. Mm -hmm. um, uh, places such as Kroger's and Walmart and Walgreens even offer the seasonal flu vaccine. So that vaccine would be easy to get and, and it would be very wise to get that vaccine. As far as the swine flu vaccine, we, we're still, they're still working out the details of distribution. Mm -hmm. um, you may only be able to go to certain clinics or, or even the health department to, to receive the swine flu vaccine. But we'll know more about that as the vaccine gets closer to deployment. Okay, and what about the, um, the self-measures apart from the vaccine, the things we hear, the cover your mouth when you cough, wash your hands, is that, is that something everybody should be doing? Absolutely. Flu vaccine is a virus that, that is usually spread by um, small respiratory droplets. Um, if someone coughs or sneezes, they'll aerosolize tiny droplets of, of virus-filled uh, mucus or water in the air. You breathe that in, you just got the flu. Um, or if they cough in their hand, the virus is on their hand and they'll go rub it on a desk or a phone or a doorknob. Um, if you come behind them, and, and flu virus can live on a doorknob for as long as eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours. If you come <laughs> behind them and touch that doorknob, it's on your hand. So you should wash your hands frequently. Um, if, you, if you don't have access to soap and water, um, alcohol-based um, hand gels are acceptable. In fact, that's the, uh, if you don't have soap and water, that's what's recommended as an alcohol-based hand gel. Okay, which so are commonly available at Walmart or Walgreens or any store. So what you're saying until, let me see if I'm right about this. The sw everybody should get a seasonal flu vaccine. Correct. That's great protection against that strain. Uh, the swine flu vaccine, not yet available. Correct. So in terms of swine flu, the best protection at this point are, is the hand, hand washing, washing, the... Stay away from someone who's sick. Um, don't don't make it a habit or try not to touch your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. Um, if, if the virus is on your fingers and you touch your eyes or you touch your nose or you bite your fingernails, that's how the virus enters your body. So make it a habit not to touch your face. So if your contacts are bothering you, wash, wash your, your hands, hands first. before. <laughs> okay, that's a real good point. So all those self measure, self help measures about hand washing and all that, that is that equally effective against the swine flu as it is against seasonal flu? They're, they're, they believe so. They believe uh, they're, so. They're currently studying that and they believe so. Okay, yes. well that's encouraging. So we're not totally without some means of protecting ourselves. Correct. <laughs> the other thing is if you, if you have the flu, um, you should cover your mouth if you cough or you should, you should try to avoid others. Um, that's the best thing to do because if you if you're, have the flu and you're at work and you're coughing and you're sneezing, you're going to give it to someone. So someone who has the flu should stay home. <laughs> yes, you should stay home. The current recommendations are you should stay home for 24 hours after you run your last fever. Um, and fever is defined by 100 degrees or greater. Um, and this is without taking Tylenol or Advil. You mm -hmm. should stay home until you have no fever for 24 hours. Without medicine. Without medicine. All right, so now let's talk about the family members who are at home with the sick loved one. What does the caregiver or the family member need to do to try to keep from getting the flu? <laughs> you, should, you, should, you should practice the same measures we just discussed. Hand washing, try not to touch your face, 
um, using uh, household disinfectants that are chlorine or iodine based or, or you know, the, the Clorox with the bleach. Clorox wipe, yeah. All that stuff is fine for wiping down uh, desk surfaces and doorknobs and phones. You should try to isolate the ill individual into their own bedroom. Um, and if possible, their own bathroom. And I know some people aren't able to isolate them in their own bathroom, mm -hmm. but you can still clean the surfaces of the bathroom. Um, as far as um, linens from someone who has the flu or food utensils or, or glasses and cups, you don't have to wash those separately from other clothes. Um, the, the soap and the hot water will kill the Okay, virus. but really watch the surfaces. And Correct, the, you should, okay. especially the, the bedside table. Okay. Keep it clean. Okay. All right. Well, Dr. Harris, I'm going to pause now and see if we have any questions. Okay, we're doing we're doing good on our questions, so I guess we're we're doing a good job of covering everything. So let's just quickly wrap up then. Um, swine flu, seasonal flu. What what are the biggest differences between? We we've, we've talked about the prevention is a little bit different because we have a seasonal flu vaccine. We don't yet have a swine flu vaccine. Correct. Okay. And, but um, the prevention aspect very similar apart from the vaccine uh, in terms of hand washing and correct okay all right all right so then what do the swine flu and just what we know seasonal flu what do they have in common uh, they both can cause a very unpredictable um, um, seasonal um, epidemic um, we expect the swine flu to be much much more severe and more people getting it not necessarily that it's a more severe virus, but that more people are going to get it who would normally get ordinarily get the seasonal flu. Okay. Um, you, uh, I, at least once a week, I'll read in the newspaper about somebody who has died from the swine flu. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't know that 36,000 people died last year from the seasonal flu. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, it's a seasonal flu is just as bad as swine flu, um, and you're going to get both hit us this year. Um, that also means you can get the swine flu early in the season um, and then get the seasonal flu later if you don't protect yourself. So you should get both vaccines. Um, right now, currently in, in my area, um, 97 to 98% of the people who, are, who have been diagnosed with the flu are swine flu okay. or, or 2009 H1N1. Okay. Um, we, there are some seasonal flu A viruses circulating. I, I haven't really seen much in my area. Okay. All right. So. The swine flu, seasonal flu, the symptoms and the um, possible risk factors, the symptoms, all that are very similar. It's just that because no one has immunity, a person who might ordinarily not get seasonal flu is more susceptible to swine flu because it's a new flu strain. They have no antibodies. Right. Them. So yeah, it's interesting you say that there, it, and this is this is ongoing and things change every week. Um, but it seems that the swine flu is attacking um, young people more than it's attacking those persons over 64, 65 years old. And it seems that some pe persons over 60 seem to have some very small degree of immunity okay. to one of the components of the swine flu. Um, they're studying this. They don't know if this is going to bear out when cold weather hits. But right now, um, the, the vast majority of persons that are coming into my clinic with the flu are younger. The swine children, flu swine or flu. younger. Okay, so swine flu. And it's running through schools. Yeah. Swine flu, from what we see right now, looks like young people are getting it quicker than older people. Correct, but that may not bear out as time right. goes on. This is this early, is, this is early very information. Early in the season, right. Very early in the season. And I do expect it to change as time goes on. Okay, all right. Well, then let's just wrap up then with uh, we want people to be able to protect themselves from both of these. So let's just reemphasize that one last time, Dr. Harris, and then I think we'll we'll sign off. But well, I'd like to say one more thing. Oh, excuse um, me. And I'd, I'd like to say this because I've, I've talked to some parents who've gone to uh, a university emergency room or even a Baptist emergency room. The, the CDC um, publishes certain guidelines on how we should treat the flu when you come down to it, come down with it. Um, and, and the vast majority of healthy people, um, analgesics, plenty of fluids, bed rest, and, and they'll overcome the flu. Um, everyone who goes to the doctor, or almost everyone, they expect to get a prescription for Tamiflu mm -hmm. or Valenza or mm -hmm. something like that. The current CDC guidelines are to only treat children younger than five, mm -hmm. since children are expected to have a high rate of complications, mm -hmm. or, or adults that have chronic health conditions, mm -hmm. diabetes, emphysema, heart disease. 
or, or some other disease that, that would warrant them to be treated, or um, persons over 65. Okay. Um, so if you, if you go to your health provider and he doesn't give you Tamiflu for the flu, um, don't be surprised. He's following the guidelines. Okay, so that's Tamiflu um, is for Tamiflu younger... Is a, Tamiflu is a pill, um, and there is a suspension version of it. Relenza is an inhaled medicine. Now, Tamiflu can be dosed down to one year of age. Mm -hmm. um, Relenza, um, I believe the, the youngest person who can take it is seven years old. Okay, and are those used in the treatment of both season flu and swine flu according to the CDC guidelines? No. No, okay. Now, this, the CDC uh, will constantly um, evaluate the resistances to certain uh, medicines. Currently, the swine flu is sensitive to Tamiflu and it is sensitive to uh, Relenza. Mm -hmm. um, the seasonal H1N1 or last year's um, mm -hmm. seasonal flu virus is resistant to Tamiflu. Mm -hmm. um, the problem that clinicians are going to have is determining which one you got. Mm -hmm. um, and what we, we base our treatments on are guidelines from the CDC. Mm -hmm. They study these viruses each week and, and post on their website what's circulating in your area and how we should treat it. Currently, 98% of the flu is swine flu, so most people are getting Tamiflu. Based on the age criteria that Correct. you just stated, which, Correct. repeat that if you don't mind, Dr. Harris. Who um, the CDC recommends that children under five years old okay. are treated. Okay. Um, uh, adults over 65 are treated, no matter what their health conditions. Anyone with a chronic respiratory illness, uh -huh. um, COPD, asthma, um, anyone who is immunosuppressed, mm -hmm. um, HIV, certain neuromuscular disorders mm -hmm. like um, MS, mm -hmm. um, uh, and anyone with diabetes or heart disease. Okay, those are the ones who are treated with these uh, antivirals, I think Correct. they're called. Okay, all Correct. right. Thank you for pointing that out. That's, that is uh, that is um, different. And while we're talking about the CDC, I do want to give you this website, um, www.flu.gov. That is a wonderful uh, resource, and it is the website of the CDC. So, um, for any questions that you might have, that's a great resource, and I, I think they do update it very often. So, well, let me repeat that: www.flu.gov. And as Dr. Harris mentioned, um, if you haven't had your seasonal flu vaccine yet, those are available in the Baptist Medical Clinics. Uh, if you need to know which clinic is nearest you, let me give you a website for that too, www.mbhs.org slash clinics. That page has a link to a map that shows all the locations of the Baptist Medical Clinics in the Jackson area. So we want to encourage you, if you haven't had your uh, seasonal flu shot, definitely go ahead and do that. One last question on that, and then I think we'll wrap up. Uh, if you get a flu shot early in the season, will it last all season? And if not, what can you do about that? S flu seasons are very unpredictable. <laughs> um, Mississippi tends to peak around late December, early January. And if you get a flu shot in late September, early October, we would expect you to be covered. Um, if, flu, if seasonal flu spreads on into late spring, you may not be covered. Um, um, can you get another flu shot later in the there year? There is supply. Now, for there is some degree of immunity that's left. It's just waning immunity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not so much that, that the flu shot is wearing off. It's that things kind of, your body needs to be reminded that this is out there and it needs to, you need to build antibodies to it. Um, I usually do not revaccinate my, my patients mm -hmm. if the flu season is, is running late. I do reserve a small quantity of, of flu vaccines for a very select few individuals that it would just be devastating to them if they didn't mm -hmm. catch the flu bite. Okay. All right. Well, I think with that, then, we'll wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us for this webcast today. I hope that you'll tune in on uh, October 14th at 1215 Central Standard Time. That will be our next webcast. We're going to have Dr. Buffkin Moore. He's a clinical psychologist. And he's going to be providing some great tips on managing daily stress, especially for caregivers, how to get help when you need it. So thank you for joining us, and we hope that you will tune back in on October 14th. Thanks again, Dr. Harris. Thank you.